task number two นะครับ prepare a proposal three I said that um, I start gathering information and requirements. Number four, analyze requirements and so on. นะครับ um, I will list all the tasks. Suppose I say that okay. Uh, my customer asks me to go to visit them, นะครับ to um to listen to the debriefing um session on seven, นะครับ um slash seven that means today, 2021, นะครับ and it's just one day only. Then I say that okay, it's one day. The responsible person is Paramin. Then I just write it down like this. Prepare a proposal. I think I will spend until this coming Friday. Let's say, นะครับ I said a t up seven slash two thousand twenty one until ten slash seven slash two thousand twenty one. I said that Boromin is the person to prepare. Gathering the information, I said that okay. Um, we will start on next Monday. That is 13 of July 2021. But the gathering of requirement, we have to take a week. It might be until 17 of July of 2021. Suppose I say that, okay, it's 18. To analyze the requirements, um, I can say that okay. When the um, gathering requirements start for two days, we can start the analyzing of the requirement that is from fifteen slash seven slash two thousand twenty one. Uh, we spend around two weeks, something like this, and then we just like list out who have to do what task. Uh -huh. Later on, if you found that okay. When you have to gather the requirements, นะครับ the gathering of the requirements might be just like um conduct interview interview นะครับ and then gather um existing documents then you may say that okay it's three point one and three point two so start date might be 13 slash 7 slash 2021 um, to 15 slash 7 2021 while gathering the existing documents start from 14 slash 7 slash 2021 until 17 slash 7 slash 2021. Okay. So People who conduct the interview and gather the existing um, documents are Alex and John in this case. So, but gathering information and requirement are SA team. That means Alex and John must be the member of SA team. Right? So, what about on the right hand side? In this one, right? it will be the GAN chart. Right? The GAN chart is on the right hand side. The things that we do is that, okay. We will have just um, set up the time scale. Uh -huh. For example, we say that okay, this is July 2021. Uh -huh. um, we say that okay, we have week. Okay, sorry. We have for, um, the first to seven uh -huh, of July. And then Okay, and so on. Okay, so in this one, I say that okay, it's one day only. That might be just like one bar, one small bar. To specify that, okay, it's here. Okay. Well, prepare a proposal is here. 
the next one is gathering information and requirements. You can see that it is a kind of bar. The Gantt chart is a kind of bar chart like this. And then um, for conducting the interview, uh, for conducting the interview, it would be just like um, another line instead. Okay, something like this. Uh, you will see the example in details when I show you the the real can chart I have in the handouts. I have. So it will be like this. So what does it mean? The bar on the right hand side of the can chart is showing that, okay, um, how long is the time span for each task? Some tasks are the subtasks of um, another task. Some tasks has to be completed before you start another task. For example, in here, you can see that Task number two, prepare a proposal, is a task that you can do it after you finish getting a debriefing from customer already. Uh -huh. When we talk about um, gathering information and requirements, you can start doing it without waiting for preparing a proposal to finish. That means when the proposal is preparing uh -huh, for a couple of days, then you can start gathering the information. But if the customer say that, um, you can start conducting the interview on the 11, not 13. That means you can just like um, reschedule like this. Uh -huh. And then the project manager has to see that if you would like to, if you would like to shift uh -huh, or reschedule the gather um, um, for conduct the interview uh -huh, to be quicker, uh -huh. will it, um, what to say? Will it just like um, what to say? Overlap with others, um, other thing or not? Uh -huh. it, that's the first thing. The second one is that when you can just like um, conduct the interview faster, will it make the whole task uh -huh, or the whole project to be run faster or not? So what do I mean? You can see that in here. I said that okay for task number three, gathering information and requirements. We start from um, in the past. We start from thirteen uh -huh, to seventeen. But now we can start interviewing on 11. Uh -huh. Can we finish the gathering information before 17 or not? In this one, we may say that oh, the problem in here is not because of the conduct interview, but it's because of gathering existing um, documents that makes this task number three to be finished on 17. So it's not related. You conduct the interview, Alex will do it. While gathering the existing document, John will do it. So that means in this case, um, you have to just let John to discuss with their, and, um, with their users that, okay, because um, conduct the interview can start earlier, is it possible for me to get the doc existing document faster than the um, 14? If the, um, if the user said that, mm, okay, you can start on 13 and you say that, okay, normally you use three days to finish. Uh -huh. So what does it mean? You say that, okay, task number three, we will finish one day earlier. And then you just shift this chart uh -huh, to make a chart for task number three to be shorter for one day, something like that. So right now, um, you can see that we have the whole plans of the project in here. That means you can just like uh, when you have to extend or when you have to shorten some time of some task, it will affect for the whole task in the whole project. So the project manager will have to use this scan chart to help. And in the near future, for anyone who do the um, senior project who, or who has to do the um, um, cooperative education, your supervisor uh -huh, or your senior project advisor will have to do the same Gantt chart like this and talk to you as well. So the things that you, who is the member uh -huh, of the team uh -huh, or of the project will have to do is that just tell your supervisor that, okay, um, when can you finish this task? For example, if they say that, hey, um, I want you to study for the new, um, the new, the new tools that we have to use. Do you think how many days that you can finish? 
okay. If you say that, okay, I can spend six days. Six days. And if they may negotiate with you, is that possible to have to be five days instead? If you said five days, okay, then they would just like um, write down in the Gantt chart and draw the, the, the bar. Uh -huh. Because after you um, study for that um, new tools already, I'm sure that you have the following tasks after studying the new tools. For example, they may ask you to start developing some parts of the project. So the faster you can um, study the new tools, the faster you can start coding that program. So um, all of the Gantt chart will be just like shifted. So that if they say that, okay, firstly, they, they plan to let you finish all the tasks I have in this project within um, 20 working days. But um, on the assumption that you finish studying the new tools within five, um, six days, but now you do it faster. That means you said that, okay, you can finish studying for this new tool within five days. That means um, the time we shifted one day, um, one day quicker. So from 20 working days, now it becomes 19 working days already because the time that you spend to study the new tools is decreasing from six days to be five days, something like that. Okay. Uh -huh. So this is the example of the, um, the Gantt chart. Uh -huh. um, the real Gantt chart, when you use the project management tools, will be more complicated than this. Uh -huh. But this is the basic Gantt chart. Um, when you have to use the project management tools, you can specify that, okay, who are in the pool of the responsible person do we have? For example, if you say that your team consists of 20 people, you can enter the, the list of those 20 people and the role of them. Uh -huh. So that means, okay, suppose you said that, okay, Miss A, uh -huh, Mr. B, Mr. C, Miss D, Miss E, uh, Mr. G, something like that, and so on. And you say that you can assign Miss A as a project manager. Mr. B, Mr. C, Miss D, and Miss E, they are developers, something like that. Then you just like um, click on the drop down list to choose the responsible pay, um, person that have from the pool that you have got. Apart from that one, what else? In the software, the project management software, each person will have the charge, the charge code or charge rate. Okay. These are amount of money that we charge our customer or charge our user. For example, I have normally we don't charge by the name of the person. I have the charge code or the charge rate will be charged by the position of that person in the team. For example, let me just give you some ideas so that you know whether you would like to be in this field or not. PM or project manager. It's around 50,000 baht per day. System analyst around 20,000, hang on, should be more than that, around 25,000 per day and a half. Developer. So what will happen? Uh -huh. Let's see. If I say that I will work as the um, system analyst, uh -huh. I work as a system analyst. You can see that in here, the calculation will be this. I uh have -huh. this one for my first task. It is um, the first one, get a debriefing from customer. It is one day. I uh have -huh. prepare a proposal is another three days. So that means, okay, if I'm considering from task one to task four, I have to charge four days from the customer. My role, I said that my uh, my role is system analyst, it is 30,000 baht. 
So that means, okay, my part it is um, one twenty thousand. Uh -huh. Now let's talk about the next person. Uh -huh. um, I said that for the um, conduct interview and get um, and gather existing documents. These are from Alex and John. They are junior. Uh -huh. They are junior um, system analyst. So the cost per day is around twenty five thousand baht per day. Uh -huh. So that means for the junior, how many days do we have to spend? Gathering the information is five days. I have, sorry, six days. Um, conduct interview. I have um, four days. I have, and gather existing document. Hang on, hang on. Conduct interview. Five days. I'm sorry, I calculated wrongly. And then for gather existing document, four days. Uh, while task three, six day. So, how much does the customer has to pay? Six or nine? Uh, I can tell you that for task number three, it's complex. Because task number three, even though we use six days only, but in the same day, there will be two system analysts to work. Okay? So when we charge to the customer, we don't charge six days, but we charge five days for Alex, four days for John. Okay? In total, this part is nine days. That means you have to multiply nine by 25,000. That means you have to pay Two to five thousand bahts. Uh -huh. So you can see that when you have to calculate the um, amount of money that you charge to the customer. Uh -huh. Now we just like have just the very easy task from task one to task four only. Uh -huh. uh, we haven't analyzed the requirement yet. The analyze of the re requirement team here. Uh, we may say that okay, um, we use just um, two people to help together in here. It's 15 days, two people. Uh -huh. And we say that we charge 25,000. So that means you have to multiply 25,000 by 15 uh -huh. in order to get the money. So, and then you sum up this money to charge the customer. Because we call when uh, we charge the customer, we charge per man day. Uh -huh. And then we use this amount of money to charge. I'll talk about the details more when we reach more parts in here so that you can see that, okay, um, how do you gonna charge them? And how do we, how will they charge you back if you cannot finish all the things on time? Okay, right. So when you have this already, this is the basic things for the can chart. When we talk about the project management software, they can also help you, some of them can help you to um, enter the charge rate. Uh -huh, um, into the software as well so that um, at the end of this like um, entering all the tasks you can generate um, the price uh -huh, that you have to charge to the customer too after we have this already uh -huh, the next thing is that okay uh, when we know the, the the first breakdown structure already uh -huh, this one below the next two Apart from Gantt chart, we will learn about like PERT CPM chart, PERT slash CPM chart. This is the same chart, PERT slash CPM or PERT CPM chart. Somebody may call it as PERT diagram, something like that. For the PERT or CPM, PERT stands for Program Evaluation Review Technique, while CPM is Critical Path Method, Critical Path Methods. Normally, the reason why we call it as PERT and CPM is because we have to use these two techniques together. When you draw one diagram, uh -huh, they come with the, the chart together with the um, critical path methods. That's why we just like use these two names together. The distinction between the two methods has disappeared over time. In the past, 
when we had the when we had the uh, what to say per chart นะครับ people had per chart only in the um, around um, 1980s when the time goes by when people thought about like CPM นะครับ people start using P CPM as the um, addition for the per and when the time goes by no one use just like one chart anymore they just like use per and CPM together that's why right now the distinction between these two methods has been um, has disappeared Okay, now for the PERT and CPM, what are they? I'll talk about this um, this chart next on. PERT CPM is called a bottom-up technique. It's called a bottom-up technique. What does it mean? The one that we prepare in um, GAN chart is the top-down. Um, top Let me just show you again. It's the top-down. Because in the Gantt chart, because in the Gantt chart, you see all the chart. Um, sorry, you you see all the tasks in the list, something like that. You list from the bigger picture to the small one. So that's why we call it as top down. While the um the chart that is part of CPM, because um we just like use it for bottom up. We have each task, and we can go back, to combine all the values together to see the bigger picture. That's why we call it as bottom-up technique. Uh, I'll show you the next one. Uh, once you know the task, the duration, and the order in which they must be performed, you can calculate the time that it will take to complete the project. So for example, uh, in here, if you just like go back to see the GAN charts, You can see that in here. Okay, you can see that we have um, we have um, task one to task four in this case. We know that task one spend around one day. Task two spend around three days. Task three point one. Uh, sorry, if we if we just like want to use a bigger picture. Uh, we say that okay task number three task number three we will spend around six days and task number four we will spend around 14 days something like that we will make this kind of chart uh, with this kind of task to be related to each other to set up the priority uh, um, and the period of time uh, for each task as a diagram. Uh, so we will call this kind of thing as PERT and CPM chart that I'll show you next on. Because I mean like when we know the details of each task, we can combine all of them and when then, then um, you will know the time to complete the whole project. So, which type of chart is better? Although a GAN chart offers a valuable snapshot view of the project, PERT is more useful for scheduling, monitoring, and controlling the actual work because if some of the tasks need to be extended, um, PERT will be easier to see uh, the impact of that task over the whole project. So that's why it's good for monitoring. And also, uh, what about the control? If you know that, okay, development team A is slow and it may cause like the, the module one to be slowed down and it, it cause the effect for the, for the whole project because the integration test, you cannot do it if module one is not finished, then it might be the time for project manager to urge or to inform development team A that you have to speed up because right now you are almost behind the schedule, something like that. PERT and GAN chart are not mutually exclusive techniques and project managers can often use both methods. I can see that many times the project managers, they use these techniques together. 
because when you list out list of tasks, you use Gantt chart first, and then you pick um, the details from Gantt chart to create per chart next on. Okay. Now, I have, we talk about the identifying of a task in a work breakdown structure. How do we gonna do? I have, okay. The first thing, you have to list the tasks or activities that we have. Also, when you get each task, you have to set up the event or milestone. For example, when do you start this task? When do you expect to finish this task? The milestone is that um, when the following task is coming, how can the following task start? Does the following start, um, sorry, does the following task need to wait this task to be finished first before they can start? Or they can start at the same day? Or how long when this task start, the next on or the upcoming task, uh -huh, we call it as, um, I call it as predis sorry, predecessor task and accessor task. Predecessor is the task that come before. I have, for example, okay, let's see. If I show you the task in um, my Gantt chart that I um, prepared before, where is it? If I show you the, the um, task list that I have got before, I have, you can see that task one. I have, if I just add two more column, I name the first column as predecessor. Not, not accessor, I, have, I just like um, forgot I put the wrong word. It called successor. Successor task is a task that follow this task or just must come behind this task. So let's talk about task number one. Task number one is the first task. We don't have any task before. So we don't have predecessor task. But successor task about um, for task number one. You can see that there is only um, task two that has to come after task one. So successor task is task two. While sucks, um, while predecessor task, predecessor task of task two is task one. And successor task for task two is task three. I have in here. Okay, something like this. While um, task three and a half task three the predecessor task of task three in here is task two and successor task from this um, diagram is task number four uh, for 3.1 uh, some of the um, project management software doesn't um, break into details of like uh, 3.1, 3.2 for the predecessor task, but some of the software it has, then you can see that task 3.1 can be done after task number two. Uh -huh. And the successor task of 3.1, uh -huh. we say that, okay, it's task four. Why is that? Because you can see that for task 3.2, you don't need to end task 3.1 first before you can do it. Uh -huh. So that means for 3.2, uh -huh, you normally do it after task to finish. Uh -huh. You can start task, I'm um, sorry, you can start task 3.2 uh -huh, on some condition because you can see that in here. Um, if you have a look, have task task 3.2 uh, will start whenever um, I mean after task to finish up here so after that 
So I think the diagram here is a bit wrong. Okay, it should be like this. Okay. Next, uh, the successor task of task 3.2 is task 4. Uh, is task 4. Task 4, the predecessor uh, of task 4 will be 3.1 and 3.2. And successor task of task four, now we don't have it yet. Uh, we just leave it like this. So you can see that these are like predecessor and successor task that we have to just like prepare. The reason is that when you prepare the predecessor and successor task already, it help us in order to prepare uh, um, per chart and CPM chart very easily. When we have got this one already, uh, now let's move back to our slide. 